So I am the daughter of immigrant parents who instilled a work ethic and ambition that encourages me to be both career driven and highly educated, fitting in with traditional, traditional feminist ideals. However, I'm also in a loving relationship as well as looking forward to a career, I look forward to being his wife, changing my last name to his and being the mother of his children. I take pride in cleaning our home, making our meals and catering to his needs as well as my own. My question to the panel is this, as important as feminism is globally, and I, like many of my peers, am passionate about the cause, has it gotten to a point where the ideals have begun to make women feel contradictory? And if so, how do we reverse this? Okay, Holly Kramer, as a uh, first-time panellist on q and I'm going to bestow this question upon you. Well, thank you very much. Um, Kelly, I think that you are the epitome of a feminist because you are a woman who's doing what you want to do and you have those choices. Um, my mother was a feminist and she was a great supporter of the likes of Gloria Steinem and Germaine Greer. Um, but when my generation came along, I think we were a bit reluctant to call ourselves feminists because feminism had a lot of baggage associated with it from the early days. Um, but I think there's a resurgence in feminism, at least I hope there is, because really it means simply supporting women, supporting women's rights and supporting women's choices. And so I'm proud to call myself a feminist and I hope you will be as well. Um, <laughs> It's, I totally get it, right? So I'm also the daughter of migrants and, uh, you know, there's this expectation as well that I'll be some sort of perfect Sudanese cook um, and, you know, my awesomeness as a woman is also somehow tied into the fact that my house will always be really clean, but I'm also really uh, passionate about being educated and striving and having ambition and this and that. I guess the way I've sort of settled with it um, is that feminism at, the, at where we are now is about the structural inequalities that exist because... It is about the equality of males and females, um, and that's sort of reflected in the individual choices we have. But we do have to understand that there are structural inequalities, and it's not pointing fingers at guys and saying, mate, you know, you're the reason why I can't, there's a gender pay gap, but saying that there's um, the way our system is set up, the way work and family is set up, the way society expects certain roles of, of males and females, and even... There, there's no space for masculinity to be a broader church than just, um, you know, to do with bringing home the, the money, so to speak. Um, I think it is where we are now is how do we deal with that structural inequality and how do we look beyond unconscious bias instead of saying, you know, you're not allowed to be, oh, you can't call yourself a feminist if you do want to please your man and have an awesome career. Because if that's your choice and that's what you want to do, you should be able to do that freely but our choices aren't made in a vacuum. And the, the society that we're in at the moment doesn't allow us, doesn't allow us to make those choices freely. We're constrained by the way um, a whole bunch of things happen. So, yeah, it, it isn't about individuals as much as it is about the structural inequalities. Bad feminism is uh, the lost island for misbehaving women. <laughs> 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 and it's wonderful there. Uh, no. <laughs> Bad feminism is a couple different things. It started tongue in cheek because I found that as a woman, I really do claim feminism, but I'm imperfect at it. And so I wanted to claim the label while also acknowledging that I'm human and imperfect and that sometimes I hold contradictory ideas. And at the same time, it was also a correction for mainstream feminism that has historically only focused on white upper middle class women to the detriment of queer women, women of color, transgender women, working class women. And so, yes, bad feminism is about more inclusion and also accepting that you can be a feminist and you can, as the previous question ask or wanted have it all or you can't really have it all but you can want to have it all <laughs> and so you know it's kind feminist. of a greedy concept isn't it having it's it all so is always applied to women and it sounds unreasonable inherently right that's what I dislike about that term absolutely well you know bad feminism is also moved through the world like a man do what you want whenever <laughs> <laughs> okay so that would be the moment where we say Julie is that your thing <laughs> well I don't want to be bad at anything I do <laughs> I don't want to be stereotyped and I don't want to be pigeonholed and uh, if I want to self-describe in a particular way, I will, and if others want to self-describe, that's great. But instead of focusing so much on analysing the labels, let's look at what people do. And I'm very proud of what I've been able to achieve as Foreign Minister in focusing on gender inequality in our region and across the world. 
and I've refocused our aid budget so that our aid budget now focuses on gender inequality. I've ensured that at least two billion dollars of our aid budget goes specifically to programs to promote gender equality across the Pacific, across Southeast Asia. Yesterday for International Women's Day I announced a partnership with the World Bank whereby we will be working to promote economic empowerment for women in Southeast Asia. Whenever I go overseas, I meet with women, whether they be politicians or journalists or activists, so that I can hear from the women in a particular country what's going on, as opposed to the briefings that foreign ministers usually receive. Personally, I'm a champion of, of William Hague's initiative about preventing sexual violence in conflict against women and girls. So it's what you do that counts, not what you call yourself. And I think in answer to Kelly's point when she was describing herself and what she wants to achieve, that's fantastic. But of course, there are compromises. Whenever you make choices, there are compromises. But I think it's what we do as opposed to standing up and declaring, I am a feminist or I'm a bad feminist. It's being judged on what you actually seek to achieve rather than how you label yourself. Max, in her question, um, Julie said, um, implied that it was it might be inconvenient for you politically not to adopt all. the term no, feminist. No. Is that why you don't describe no, yourself that way? No, not at all. I just never have. And the more people demand that I describe myself as a feminist, like, the more I say, well, hang on, let me describe myself how I wish if I want to describe myself. Annabelle, you wrote in the paper yesterday that you're disappointed that I don't describe myself as a feminist. I am so disappointed you don't describe yourself as a liberal. <laughs> <laughs>